Hey guys, welcome to Zane Morgan Crafts. This is Cheryl, I'm Zane Morgan, and I'm gonna show you how to make a druidic altar. All right guys, before I start the video, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. I really appreciate the views and the subs that I've been getting. Keep them up. If you like my content, share it with your friends. Um, building my channel, I'm really, really enjoying the process. So without further ado, this is my first official build video. Uh, so what that means is instead of showing you tips and tricks, I'm going to take you some of the tips that I've shown you and we're going to apply it to a build. Uh, this one I made a while ago and actually was heavily inspired from Baldur's Gate 3. It's from the Druid part of the game. Uh, my take on it was that it actually glows. So here's an LED in it to make it glow green. The one that we're making is a little different. You can make it however you want. If you want to make it look like the one that I just showed you, go for it. This one, however, has a travel rune on it. You can put whatever you want, really. It could even be a sacrificial altar. And this one has a different LED in it. This one actually cycles through different colors, which I thought was pretty cool. All right. And as far as materials that you'll need for this video, all you're going to need is dollar store, foam core board, some Mod Podge, some paint, an LED, and flock if you want to add vegetation, and uh, some twine if you want to add the vines. All right, let's get into it. So to start out, we're going to need three varying size circles. I used a lid, another lid, and my Philips Hue controller. Uh, so you're going to cut those out after tracing them in the foam core. And for the altar top, I'm going to do a two by two square. And you're going to cut out three of those. And you're going to use a craft paint in the center for the circle. And you're going to cut that out too. All right. So now for the tabletop, what you're gonna do is cut it out slightly bigger and you're gonna leave that center circle intact and then you're gonna pick out a rune or whatever design you want and draw that in the middle. Next, you're going to start making designs in the circles. Uh, lightly trace it with a pen. Don't press into it very hard unless that's the design you want. Uh, once you figure it out, I'm doing a spoked pattern like it was constructed in pieces. Uh, you're going to go over it with the pen and just deepen those lines. And you're going to do that on all three pieces. And next we're going to start adding a stone or a brick pattern on to the sides of the squares that we cut for the table. Um, so like bricklaying, you're just gonna alternate and then we're gonna gouge them deep with the pen. And now we're going to solidify that design. Uh, you wanna go over it pretty deep, go almost all the way to the bottom of it without cutting through. And then to trace the other side, you can hold up a lamp to it and you're gonna cover the area that you don't want to glow with some black paint. And now we're going to use some foil to texture the rock surfaces uh, or stone surfaces. And if you have little pieces that weren't perfect, I mean, my look is for it to be a little bit in ruins. So I chipped off pieces and that helps add to the realism. Nothing is perfect. So, Okay, and we're going to do that on the altar top and the sides. Now we're going to take some hot glue and we're going to join up the three pieces to create the altar base. And then we're going to cut out the circle in the center of the squares. And then we're going to hot glue it to the base. Now when you're gluing on the altar top, you want to flip it over and make sure that your white area isn't being covered. And now we're just gonna cut through the other layers so that we can access that compartment, okay? And now we're joining them all together. Your lines may or may not join up perfectly. Mine did not this time, last time they did. So just be mindful of that. Okay, so now we're gonna create a base for it. So, I just made a wacky shape. You're gonna make it whatever shape you want. And I actually decided I wanted to do 
two layers of that. So I'm taking what I cut out and I'm just adding a little bit extra to the edge there. And this is also gonna make it a little bit higher. Um, so if your tea light is a little bigger, it'll stand up or have more room to uh, sit in there. If you have issues with the foam corn paper not peeling off, all you have to do is apply some heat or you can even soak it with a damp towel. All right, now we're trying to figure out where the hole is gonna go on the base. So we're gonna trace around this. We're gonna add the pen to the bottom of the altar, put that in the middle and poke down. That's our center. Trace that and you're gonna cut. And I don't know why I even bothered drawing a circle. We're gonna put a square. Okay, make sure it goes through and now we're gonna hot glue it to the base. Perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna take some Mod Podge. I'm not gonna bore you with that but we're gonna apply it all over. Now when we get time for the tabletop, uh, hold off on that. So for the tabletop, you wanna make sure you're not getting in the holes. I mean, if you do, it's no big deal, but just try and be wary of that. I know this might be controversial, but I do use a hair dryer for anything that requires drying. I hate waiting, I'm very impatient, and most hair dryers have a little trigger on them that regulates the heat, Use that, use it from a distance, you're not gonna have any issues of it melting. So, yep, using the hair dryer here, and now it's time for paint. So I'm using graphite gray, dark gray, tan, white, and black. And here we go. So first I'm applying some black, and that's just gonna be for the darker areas, say like where water is gonna hit, whatever. It won't show up that much in the final, but it's good to get an idea of shading. Next I'm applying the graphite gray. We're just going over it. And you can paint this any color you want. This is how I chose to do this one. Okay. And I'm going over it with the dark gray hair dryer again. And now we're doing a light dry brush. Okay. And you can add the tan in, also dry brush. And just have fun with it. Age it, distress it, put some white highlights in there. Doesn't really matter. When you're happy with it, move on to the base. Just paint that with a brown. The brown I'm using is burnt umber. And it's not really gonna show through that much. You just want it to represent earth underneath it because we're gonna flock it. And that's what we're doing next. So we're taking some matte Mod Podge, spreading it out where we want the flock to go. And then we're gonna take our flock and we're gonna shake it over. <laughs> Hopefully your flock is clean. Um, okay, so you're gonna shake it off. Then you're gonna take more glue and put it wherever you want. You can use BVA for this, it doesn't really matter. I just like Mod Podge. And yeah, there's the flock. Now we're gonna add a wash. Um, I did this after the fact, you can do this before. I like doing the brown wash on top of the flock because it kind of gives it a muddy effect. And then we're gonna use a black. There we go. Again, I'm using um, a hair dryer. What I do is I spread it around with my finger as I'm blowing it and it gives it a little nice effect, I think. So here are the vines that I showed you how to make in my other video. And we're just gonna apply that wherever you want, like so. Cool. And then to cover up the edges, we're just gonna add some more flock there. And we're gonna blend it in. And now we're gonna take some sealing spray, which is just watered down PVA glue, and set it in there. And also we're, I decided to add some static grass. So again, some Mod Podge or PVA glue, and we're just gonna stick those on little clumps. And that just adds more depth. It looks like weeds, grasses, whatever. Okay, now we're gonna add the LED. This was a tea light from the Dollar Tree and I just pulled it off of the candle base and I am hot gluing that into the circle. And I'm going around the edges here just to make sure it's sealed in. And I am actually using, yet again, a hairdryer, but on the cool setting to um, help speed up the process of the hot glue drying. All 
All right, guys and gals, that's it for the video. It really shouldn't take more than an hour to make, especially if you use the hair dryer. I know, hair dryer. It really helps. I use it on all my builds. If you're safe with it and keep it at a distance, you're not going to melt anything. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll be back next week.